another win in CLG's column. And for a deeper dive into CLG's win over Immortals, now we're going to head over to Dash and two of our winners. Thank you very much, gentlemen. That's right. I'm here with the two members who were on the victory screen when you guys had that back door to close it out. First team to beat Immortals here and the undefeated streak. And it looks like second time is the charm. But I'm going to come to you, Darshan, because this is a huge victory making gods bleed, essentially. How does it feel to know that you can contest against the top team in North America? It feels pretty good, actually. I feel like we, ha we, like we prepared really, really well for this match. And... Um... We showed that we're like one of the best teams in North America, if not like the best team. And I feel like we've just been training so hard, especially for this Immortals match. And we, I think we were more ready for it than they were. Give me a sense. Uh, I'm going to come to Nick Smithy. Give me a sense of this preparation that Darshan <laughs> just talked about, because this is actually the second time that we saw you guys establish an early lead against the team. You're one of the few teams that has been able to do so. So what is it about your guys' prep and planning that allows you to establish these leads against the top tier team? Um, well, we prepared sort of like... We played like only like two or three champions, <laughs> like every player. So I think we got our champions on lock. And also our strategy, like we just kept improving day by day. And yeah. Speaking of which, champion pools, <laughs> I just have to point out, last five games, including this one, you've now played five different champions, though. So you, as an individual, are showcasing an ability to expand mm -hmm. your champion pool. We've seen everything from Elise to Rek'Sai, Nidalee, Gragas, and now the Udyr kind of out of nowhere. What's that experience been like for you this season, trying to increase your options, your level of options for the team? Well, even before, I used to play a lot of champions, mm -hmm. but it wasn't, like, up to par on, like, my core champions. So I tried to practice in solo queue, just, like, in game even, or like just watching other people play. Um, that's how I improved uh, pretty much every of my champions. All right, so we've, we've gone through the practice, we've established the game plan, we secured the early lead like we wanted to and expected to. Uh, that same situation though presented itself the first time you played Immortals and Darshan, I'm gonna come back to you here because there was a little bit of overzealousness in the first game, which uh, caused uh, Immortals to have an opportunity to get back into the game. How did you guys make sure that you kept your mindset, kept the mentality of closing out this game this time when you established that lead? Well, yeah, I think last time we played Immortals, actually, the main reason we lost is I actually threw. I dove tier two and got us all killed. But this time, um, like, even though I got, like, a little hyphy, I kind of just, like, kept, kept it down uh, until the end of the game so that we could, like, focus up. And, like, we still made a couple mistakes that I felt like we wouldn't have normally made because the pressure was high. But I feel like we really dialed it in towards the end of the game, and that allowed us to keep our composure. Hard not to get excited when you get early two kills onto a Fiora, <laughs> and then the game extends to a point where backdooring is an option at any point. You're solo splitting down that bottom tier turret. I feel like I'm like the one who always ends up backdooring. Like out of like <laughs> every pro in like the history of League of Legends, I've probably backdoored the most Nexuses. Wait, I was there too, guys. Yeah, yeah you're on. doing a great job too. I'm, just, I just, I'm always back during the Nexus at the end of the game. Well, uh, yeah, exactly. And, and uh, you know, that pressure in the bot lane was obviously huge, and it forced Immortals into a, a lot of tough uh, situations where they're trying to close out Barons in order to pull themselves back into the game. Clutch steel, Smithy. How did that feel in that moment, knowing that it was a 1v4, 1v5 situation, and you got in there to, to get that steal away? I mean, it was kind of weird, actually, because uh, they were trying to rush it while, like, they were, like, still looking at me. So, like, I was, I don't know what to do if I was just going to sit there or try to steal or, like, just to hit them. So I did both, <laughs> and I just got a lucky steal. All right, well, yeah, sometimes it comes down to that 50-50. It landed in your favor uh, this time around. Now I want to go ahead and look forward, right? Because we've talked all about today <laughs> this, this race for second place and playoff picture and all of that. Well, you've taken down the number one team. So you're one-to-one -one in the head-to-head -head record there. Probably not going to be able to catch them in the standings just as a result of their play. But moving closer and closer to that first round bye, I want to know, though, about these next five games, these next two weeks for you guys, what is your main goal in terms of focusing up and getting prepared for playoffs so that you can defend your title as champions in the LCS? Well, we just have to make sure that we don't underestimate any opponent. Like, we're playing Cloud9 next, who's probably, like, the other best team in the league besides Immortals, and they've been looking really good recently. So I think we just need to make sure that we have a really good idea of what we're going to do in the game, and I think we'll be able to beat them. All right, Nick Smith, do you got anything to add to that? It's particularly looking at Immortals and knowing that if you're going to win the NALCS again here in spring, you're probably going to have to do it against them or at least go through them at some point during playoffs. When it comes to those best of fives, how do you think you guys can fare against a team that creates exciting games like this against you guys? Well, for now, I think we should just um, 
look in every game like day by day. We shouldn't go for like the big, we shouldn't go for the goal for the big win. I think we just go for like our next game and our next game so that like we can be cons consistent. And I think that's what I've been doing. All right, keeping that, keeping your wits about you, taking it game by game, step by step. Well, gentlemen, again, congratulations on a huge victory here today. It's got to feel good. I'm going to let you get back to your team so you can celebrate a little bit. We're only halfway through our Saturday broadcast, so don't go anywhere because when we return, Energy Esports will face off against Renegades. Stay with us. Legends. 2v1, he knows he doesn't have the abilities to oh go my... back into the fight, and Raidover gets himself killed! Okay, I'm gonna go behind him. Coming behind him, still the shot. I'm gonna ulti first, I'm on AJ. Him. Okay. I ulti. I'm gonna flash on him. He's dead, he's dead, he's dead. Nice. Next one, next one, next one, let's go. Here comes Flex! Careful, back up, back up. Yeah. Here comes Flex! Yeah, keep, back keep, up. Going, keep, ah. keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, Play, but was it Turtle right here? Call. Turtle gets back in time! The Nexus stays alive! He's on to the Nexus! Does it even matter? Smithy just came up that big. Yes, it does. I'm gonna go. We're coming. Get the pick. 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 Get